various locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the 40th anniversary season of the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailing, co-hosts Brian Schmidt, PJ Noodleman, and producer Dangerous Dan Margetta. Call the show anytime at 414-421-7901. And now, the creator and host of the fastest hour in radio, Todd Bailing. And welcome to the program. Glad you could join us. We are well represented at rainy Daytona today. If you haven't got the word yet, today's race has been postponed until tomorrow. I have a uh, text in to Tim Van Boren to find out if Channel 6 is going to carry it or it'll, or if it'll be on FS1. He's either in church or in bed, but we'll get something from him and let you know. Speaking of uh, a couple of guys in Daytona, Dan and Brian are uh, looking out the window at the rain right now, I guess, right? Yeah, this yeah. sucks. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This is a, this is a bummer. That's uh, not a surprise because if I think – a week ago, it looked like this was going to happen, and normally weathermen are not good at predicting stuff, and we're kind of hoping that that was what was going to happen, and damn it if they weren't right. Professionals. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> what is the saying? Even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a yeah, while? Yeah, I was yeah. hoping this was not the nut they were going to find. Yeah. Find a different weekend. I mean, we went yeah. from, from radio row at the Speedway, where it normally used to be, into our, what, seventh floor balcony looking out at, at the ocean. The wet street. In the wet rain. Yeah. So. Huh. And that was, uh, by the way, that other voice you might have heard there is uh, P.J. Noodleman, who's uh, who's back in Wisconsin, didn't make the trip to Daytona this week. Hi, P.J. Hi there. I'm excited to hear what the boys have to report from down there. Yeah, they've been busy. I'll tell you, it may have rained and the forecast may be lousy and uh, there may be things shuffled around. But these guys got every single bit of racing they could get out of this week. Tell us a little bit about your adventures. Well, it didn't start off real good either. I mean, we were supposed to leave Monday night at like 7 o'clock, and our plane didn't push away from, well, it pushed away from the gate at 9 o'clock. And then as soon as they pushed away, the computer crashed on the airplane. So we had to push it back to the gate, and they messed around with that. And then we got trained. Two more hours. Yeah, two more hours. Then we went to a different plane, and we just needed fuel, but the fuel guy lived in northern Illinois. so he was Come on. So we had to wait for him to come and fuel the plane. So we finally took off at like 12.15 Tuesday morning. Got to Orlando at three four thirty, I think. Three, I yeah, yeah, ah. thirty. Got back to I, I think our head hit the pillar just about five a.m. Yeah. So ah. checked into the hotel for her. She's like, "Oh, you're here for one night." I'm gone for about five hours. Yeah. So then we got up and we headed to New Smyrna. So we were able to take in the Stars race at, at New Smyrna, where uh, we thought we were going to see Ty Majeski take home a big victory there, and uh, he was kicking their behinds. Was an axle issue there with about seventeen to go sealed his fate. But, uh, yeah, that was the start of quite the week. Saw a couple dirt races at Volusia, outstanding racing at Volusia. I mean, if you saw the highlights of, of Thursday night's race there, that was that's about as good as it's going to get last lap, last corner pass to see Nick Hoffman win that. And then we got to the big track, and it's kind of <laughs> the ARCA race. Uh, to the credit of NASCAR, I'll give them credit for, for moving up the ARCA guys because otherwise they'd be sitting here watching it rain too. And we all know when you get 50 cars and the budget for the ARCA teams is not – what it is in the in the bigger teams there they don't have that kind of money to sit and wait three days to race so they ran that thing in the wee hours of the morning we stayed for it all drove out of the track at about 2 a.m saturday morning Uh, so we saw all of it so we saw as much as we could and speaking of the racing uh for that night when you got out at two in the morning it was terrible my god what a lousy show we had come on you gotta be kidding me Kind of like your county fair demo derby, only at a lot faster and higher rate of speed because, my goodness, yeah, they, there weren't many straight vehicles there. And, I, I mean, I feel bad for the ARCA guys. Here it's 2 in the morning, and you got a balled-up car sitting in the garage that you got to try to fix just to get it back in your truck. That's not any fun, I'm sure. And, uh, well, you know, we started the Friday night racing pretty uh, with great enthusiasm uh, as uh, Johnny Sauter and Ty Majeski were your front row. Ty won the pole. Pretty exciting stuff. They ran up front for the first um, segment. Uh, then there was the uh, shuffle that goes on and some guys with different strategies and, and whatnot. I'll tell you what I uh, I would say that I uh, learned from that is that Johnny Sauter probably had the best truck in the field, and he could... He got shuffled back uh, and came back 
in two laps, he made up like 11 spots towards the end of that thing right before he was hung up in one of those many, many uh, wrecks that just, what, he had 12 cautions in a 100-lap race? Come on. Yeah, one of those times Johnny did get to the front. If you were watching it, you noticed all of a sudden he got three wide and hung out to dry. And I don't think they said it on the, on the TV, but I had him on a scanner. And what happened was the turbulence there lifted the rear flap of his truck up over his rear window so he couldn't see out his mirror. So when the caution came out shortly after that, one of the many, he said, sorry for getting hung out to dry. I could not see out my mirror because of the turbulence, and I didn't know they were ready to hang me out. And that's kind of one of the times when he fell back. And I'm trying to remember if that was when he got caught up in the wreck after that or if it was before that. I don't exactly know, but... Yeah, that was the strongest truck there, I would say. Yeah, and it's just frustrating watching that when you know somebody's got a, a, such a good stru- truck. You need a partner. you got to have somebody to go with you. And I, I don't think there was a lot of drafting experience in that field. You could just tell there are guys that didn't really know how to push, and they didn't know how to get pushed. And, and I think that contributed to a lot of the accidents. And his two teammates and Bailey Curry and Matt Mills aren't necessarily household <laughs> names that can be relied upon to help you out in that situation. So he was kind of on his own. Uh, you guys found out that they had a uh, a driver's only meeting before that event, huh? Right. Yeah, we were talking with Johnny on on uh, Thursday afternoon, and he said he had just came back from one of those meetings, and basically they took just the drivers in there and and basically laid it out that what they did at Phoenix, which was the last race they had, was an embarrassment to the sport. And you know, you got to clean up your act. And I said to Johnny, I go, "Did you raise your hand and say I had nothing to do with this? Can I be excused?" He just laughed and said, "No." No, he's. I was. It was entertaining to listen to, but uh, they didn't take any of that advice, I guess, because no. saw what happened on Friday. That was certainly not the case. And then they ran the uh, human sacrifice 200. After that, um, the uh, the famous Gus Dean won it. It actually ended uh, <laughs> on, on the day it was supposed to run. Right, Saturday. Yeah, a little less than 12 hours from its original green flag time. Yeah, not, in that case, they had the Venturini cars were, were really strong, and they, they worked together all race until the very end. And you got uh, Jake Finch, who's led all the time, and he's in that ride, I think, full-time, I think. And uh, and Gus Dean is just a part-time deal in a Venturini car. And the plan was for them to hook up and do the teammate deal so they can get away from everybody. I guess Gus Dean agreed to it, but then didn't execute it and said, no, I guess I'm going to win this race myself. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Jake Finch because we met him a couple times and heard some stories from him. <laughs> I actually... I actually feel bad for what happened because he didn't, he did not. I mean, he he literally asked before the start, are we going to do that again? And the spotters up there communicated with each other and they said, yes, Gus says, sure, we're going to do that again. And then we'll race it out. Well, it's a one lap, a one lap, you know, start. All those plans are just. Arca does things differently than, than the rest of the NASCAR series. So it was really only one lap. Jake should have known better than to do that. But then again, he was trusting in his teammate Gus, and Gus just left him out there. I mean, just completely screwed him. And, I mean, yeah, there will be no trust between those two going forward, I guarantee you. Um, that was the uh, – that's teammates with the famous Tony Breitinger, right? Yeah. yeah who got that's... out and trashed guys. <laughs> Her teammate who, who's, whose grandpa writes checks or something like that. Oh, boy, you can be careful. Welcome to NASCAR. You might want to, you know, just temper that just a little bit. Or how about the, it was ARC, I realized. But welcome to the big stage, you know. Get a hold of yourself here. And she raced out at the New Smyrna, too, didn't she? Yeah, in a pro late. And... A pro and uh, had some issues there, too, as a matter of fact. Well, uh, all in all, you know, if you like crashes, boy, oh, boy, uh, it's a perfect scenario at daytona uh, especially with the arca series you get a lot of people that that don't go fast very often and don't know how to handle air and they had 50 cars you know weren't it wasn't that long ago we were worried you know that they would have 15 car fields what happened the, i mean we talked to some of the people in their garage and, and they think a lot of what happened was they, they saw what happened last year where a guy like greg van Alst, just an independent family team that doesn't have a lot of money, shows up and can go out and win one of these big races and, and help out their their future. So I, I think a lot of people just pulled all cars and came down there. I mean, Alex Club, if you remember, is, is kind of a smaller car. It's a number three car. If, if you've been to Milwaukee for those races, they're kind of over in the corner by the fuel pumps with the open trailer. I mean, he finished eighth in this race. And working out of a, like his parents' garage kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, can, you can do well in this race if you keep yourself clean. Unbelievable, isn't it? And uh, 
they're they're going to be racing tomorrow. It's a full day of racing starting at 10 o'clock Central Time uh, with the Xfinity race. And then after that, around 3 in the afternoon, they will get the green for the Daytona 500. People will be getting home from work by then. We'll be back. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is out fitted with the -the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Auto Automotive.com. The Milwaukee Admirals have extended their winning streak to a franchise record 16 games. They'll look for 17 on Monday when they take on the Manitoba Moose. Celebrate Deeks goes for him. He scores his second of the game. Three game coverage from Winnipeg at 1.30. Face off at 2 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to EnviroMulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMF pmflandscape.com friends of racing for many years pmf landscape supply in west bend this is two pros and a cup of joe i think it's one of the better hires of the entire cycle you strengthen your your team by bringing in a quality coach and you weaken the other people tend to forget dan quinn almost won a super bowl two Pros, LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings, 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Welcome back to the program. Getting ready. Uh, well, Daytona has been uh, kind of shuffled around a little bit. The weather, it, just a huge system that's sitting there, Dan. And uh, apparently um, not moving very fast. No, not at all. It kind of came here and stalled out. You never like hearing those words when you're looking at a weather forecast in rain where a stalled front just sits on top of you and just got to wait to get it out of there. It's odd, I thought, for Florida because, I mean, Florida rain usually comes and goes, but this has been sitting here for two days. Well, that's how you go. Uh, Qualifying uh, last week, uh, Joey Logano in a Ford and Michael McDowell in a Ford, your front row. You know, that's that's been the... uh, the Hendrick show for so much of the last uh, what 20 years it's almost funny to have a couple of Fords on the front row and everybody was laughing oh yeah those Toyotas oh look how bad they are oh, yeah they're bad all right yeah they didn't run well in single car runs but oh on the twin uh, qualifiers you had a pair of Toyotas win them Reddick won one and my goodness, um, shows up right at the end like that, and and that might be a, a, a really nice pick for this 500-miler. Christopher Bell won the other one, so a couple of Toyotas uh, elbowing their way in up there. Um, How about uh, for McDowell's team in front row uh, motorsports with Ford? They're, it looks like they're stepping up to become what they, people are calling them a Tier 1 Ford team now. That I think they partnered with with Penske this year. Yep, and, and they got a technical alliance with them. Boy, I mean, they may be somebody that could to watch at the beginning of the year that you probably didn't think would be up there, but they're starting out strong. Now, that technical alliance thing, um, some of it I understand, some of it I don't. Part of it has to do with, you know, is it Penske equipment? Is that a, a Penske car up there, or do they just provide them with some numbers that they can uh, do a, a, a line by? I don't... Yeah, sure. they got their own shop, but, you know, they just... I think they share their data with each other as yeah. far as the Ford data goes. I think of what you all get. I mean, a tier one team probably gets the best. It, it gets, it's kind of like you pay, you get what you paid for kind of thing. If, if you're you're not a tier one team, you're probably not going to get 
you're not going to get garbage, but you're not going to get what everybody else gets. The top ones doing if they're stepping up. Uh, if you paid attention to that team over the last couple of years, they're really good at bringing people in there crew wise and crew chief wise and turning them off and then other people kind of stealing them and, and, and going to on to bigger and better things. I think Alex Bowman's crew chief was the last guy to come out of there. Um, mm. But it's, so, I mean, it makes sense if, if they're that good at, at taking guys that were okay and making stars out of them crew wise, why not, you know, bump that team up and keep them there instead of losing everybody else all the time. Yeah. Interesting stuff. And, uh, and they're, they're very good. You know, talk about these technical alliances. Now that is a um, Penske uh, alliance, but you know, the 21 car, I don't even know if the Wood Brothers gas station in Stewart, Virginia even exists anymore. I think the car is prepared totally out of the Penske shop. Correct. That's what we've seen from photos there. I mean, yeah. any photo you see of the Penske shop, you see the 21 car in there as well. So, yeah, I would say I mean, Wood Brothers might have, you know, a museum or something up in Virginia yet, but I'm pretty sure that the truck and all the work on the car is done there. Oh, okay. Now, uh, Alliance, that, that word, uh, you know, is kicked around a lot. And some things, like I said, are, are easier to understand than, than others. For instance, <clears throat> The Legacy Motor Club, which is uh, Jimmy Johnson's uh, Richard Petty, you know, seven-time champion deal, they elected to not have an alliance with any other team because, like Jimmy said, all they do basically is write a big check out to uh, Gibbs to do that for the most part. And, um, you know, it's he said it puts them a little behind to start, but they hope to have an, a competitive advantage as time goes on. It seems like a very odd strategic move, especially for a team that is uh, in a new, I mean, you know, this is new to Toyota this year. So um, is it a, is it the right move? Maybe not uh, initially, but, you know, they're hoping down the line they're going to have more uh, resources at their hands than any, any other Toyota team. It seems like some strange strategy, but you know, not everybody has the money to write a big check too. No, they don't. And then uh, I, I think it's good for them because where they were on the Chevy picking order probably wasn't as high. They're, they're, they're a little higher on the Toyota one, even though they're not the top, you know, obviously Gibbs and, and uh, 2311 looks like you're your top Toyota teams, but it's kind of what, what, Look at front row and Ford, what they did. You know, they were kind of on that deal, and they kind of proved what they could do, and then suddenly they're going to be a, t- a tier one team. I think it's pretty good for them to do that because they, on the Chevy side, you know, you got you got Hendrick and Trackhouse has kind of come on strong all of a sudden. I think you kind of pushed that that whole legacy team down the down the ladder a little bit, and I think they're, you know, maybe what third on the Toyota ladder, where they're like fifth on the Chevy ladder. Yeah, then they moved up and. Again, just to say no to an alliance is uh, is an interesting strategy. By the way, um, for for one, I'd just like to say it's very odd to see Richard Petty's name to, um, <clears throat> uh, tied in with Toyota. You know, even Jimmy Johnson. I mean, he's been Chevy his whole his whole career, and, and it just happened to be that way. It's all a business. It's all a big business. We know all about that. Um, but now. They're talking about a fourth manufacturer. This came out this week in an article that, that and with a respected uh, writer that Honda is on the way. You know, I want to see Dodge back, just like every other Mopar fan wants to see Dodge back. And uh, instead, we're going to have another Japanese manufacturer possibly coming, elbowing their way in. Um, Honda's, you know... Obviously, they have the money to spend on this sort of thing, and it's good for them. But, you know, come on. Why not Dodge? Well, Honda said that it's just part of the process. They're going to educate themselves on what race fans are really looking for. But with that said, they also said that they have nothing new to report in terms of their future motorsport direction. However, and Brian, you can probably speak more to this. Um, if they did end up going with NASCAR, would that mean that they would pull out of IndyCar because of the hullabaloo over the spec engines? That's a good question. I don't know. Ooh, I mean, ooh, there's ooh, been ooh, talk ooh. of Honda leaving IndyCar for years, but then every year they show up again, you know, and then and what is their what is their platform in the other forms of motorsports? Like, what are they looking at in IMSA? I don't think they have a real big footprint in that, if if any. I'm trying to remember, Dan. I don't, I don't 
Yeah, there's a lot of Hyundais, but I don't see any Hondas. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, so they might be open to doing some of that. You know, as far as Dodge is concerned, they don't really have a vehicle to put out there for that. You know, no, no, uh, that's that's their biggest thing right now. So to develop a vehicle strictly for NASCAR, I, I don't. That's probably not something. To Charger's look at. gonna be electric, right? This just in from Tim Van Voren. It will be carried on Fox Six live tomorrow at three o'clock. We'll be right back. As a growing manufacturing company. We needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need with Miller's Sales and Service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. This is The Herd. The winner in this is also Colin Cowherd. He's putting pressure on the Lakers. To do what? Fire Darvin Ham? They just beat the Celtics and the Knicks. Well, Colin, if we had a better coach, Eric Spolstra's got Miami a half game better than the Lakers. Steve Kerr, his team's worse than the Lakers. And those are arguably the two best coaches in the league. This is The Herd. Weekdays, 3 to 6 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. I do get some interesting uh, uh, texts while we're on the air, most of which I don't look at until we're off the air. But I did send a text to Matt Kenseth this morning, who is staying at the same hotel as Brian and Dan. And I asked him, because he promised he was going to be on with us today, to go to room 719 and knock on the door. And they would, they would have you in. And he just sent back uh, nothing like a little notice. I'm on a airplane right now heading back so uh, it didn't take them long to pack up and get the hell out of there did it no a lot of teams are doing that are flying people back to charlotte and coming back on on monday i guess it's cheaper to get an airplane than to stay somewhere yeah i mean i'm surprised watching fox right now on the tv here and larry mack is in the is in the studio at the desk doing the 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 thing from charlotte well obviously he's gonna have to fly back tomorrow morning because he's crew chiefing his uh, son-in-law's car of jordan anderson in the xfinity race tomorrow so that was a lot of shuffling going on there, I'm sure. Hey, we were talking about uh, some of these brands, you know, coming in and changing. And, you know, you can't have a Dodge. You can't have, uh, I mean, the, the Charger is going to be electric, and they're doing away with the Challenger completely. Uh, don't forget that the Camaro is going away after this season, and they're going to have to come up with a Chevrolet. Well, do they even make Chevy cars anymore? I don't. I don't even know. I can't. No, remember. last time they came with that SS. Remember that was like the Australian thing that they had. The Australian version. But, yeah. I mean, there's been talk even that maybe maybe it's not Chevy. Maybe just GM goes with Cadillac as far as their racing, uh, you know, brands because they have the Cadillac <laughs> performance cars and they're in sports cars. Right? Yeah. Something yeah. about that just doesn't resonate. Maybe I, maybe the Malibu. Yeah, Malibu is a. If are they going to make it though? I don't even know if they're going to continue to make the Malibu. I'm not sure if that's in the plans. I know they did away with the Impala. Cadillac would make sense. I mean, they have a major footprint. If you go to an IMSA race, I mean, they have huge areas where you can drive their different cars, and it's all about their performance. And they got some really nice-looking sedans out there. So they I, do. It would be cool if they did, I think thought. about Think about the, the great NASCAR uh, uh, heritage, you know, uh, win on Sunday and sell on Monday and, you know, all these rednecks and their Chevrolets, and they're all going to now start jumping on a Cadillac bandwagon? Something doesn't sound right about okay. that, does it? 
that might resonate with legacy motorsports to come back to the GM field. Ah, uh, interesting. Well, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, yeah, having Honda, it's not there's any negative having another manufacturer in NASCAR. It's nothing but positives can come out of it. I just love to hear some of these guys in their interviews, oh, that Clyde Torkel chicken pit Cadillac was running great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And they make some pretty sleek-looking Cadillacs, if you haven't noticed. Uh, so that's... Uh, it would probably make for a very nice-looking race car, that's for sure. Um, but now I, I'd like to talk about those uh, those qualifying events because you know we've they're, they're, the time on the track has been pretty limited for the cars. They weren't going to even have a practice until they, they had one practice, right? Yeah, after after the qualifying races. Yeah, that was it. And then all the manufacturers hooked up together. Very few ran with each other. All the Fords hooked up together. All the Chevys hooked up together. All the Toyotas ran together. The thing about the qualifying races, I was kind of interesting. I won with Jimmy Johnson, who, you know, was close to not making his race. I mean, he almost got beat by that 44 car with, with J.J. Yelly, and he fell to the back. And there was talk that I thought the teammate would go back and try to bring him up because Eric Jones was in that race, and people were wondering why he didn't go back there. But I, um, people that I'm on the scanner said they never told Jones to go back there and get him, which I thought that was odd because, that you know, he was in real danger of not making that race in the 84 car and needed some help to get to the front. Mm. That's kind of suspicious because you know they've hired some good people over there to give advice. You know what I, you know what I mean. Uh, Matt Kenseth is part of that team to uh, sit around with a headset on too. So interesting. Um, I was blown away by what uh, Kyle Busch said. Uh, that's two years in a row now that you know they spend all winter getting their primary car ready to go for the 500, and they tweak it till it's perfect, and they take it out for that for that uh, crash-a-thon qualifier, and uh, and for two years in a row now, he's got to go to a backup car. Um, he's And I was interested. Rowdy says, I'm not going to race in that anymore. He's going to, like, take a couple of laps and pull in and just start in the back because does it really matter if you start in the back for these 200 lappers here? It's just a matter of time you're going to be up front anyway, and at least you'll have the car you brought down to race in the 500. Come on. He probably should not have gone on record saying that, though, because exactly. it's right. one thing to pull off, oh, we had mechanical issues. It's another that NASCAR will probably penalize you, you know, start your uh, lap down. And sponsorship. Think about that, too. I mean, you got all the sponsors there. Everybody's there to watch it. It's on prime time on a Thursday night. That's why the race is held when it is and not during the day anymore. They want that exposure. So for he can say that, but next year when we're here, he's going to be out there running the whole thing until he runs. And there is some precedent. Remember the old 100% rule you got to give back when they had that whole deal with the playoffs? And it was kind of a thing where they, if you didn't give 100%, they were going to penalize you somehow. Right, right. <sighs> yeah, Rowdy, some drivers, when they get frustrated, say things that they probably, in retrospect, would say, geez, I wish I hadn't opened my mouth. But it, they're so frustrated uh, to get this same thing. And when you finally get that backup car tweaked and they're working on a thing, probably the whole time to get it ready to go and take it out in the race. And the same thing is going to happen to that one. Uh, aren't, first of all, you're limited in the amount of backup cars you can even bring with you anymore. It depends on how many people in your team. And I think Childress having two cars are only allowed one backup car to bring down there with two cars. Isn't that the way the, the formula went? We talked it about was, it. but I'm not sure for this type of racing, that is the case anymore. Cause I think that was the first couple of years of this. Now this being the third year of this car, yeah. I think that's going to be the case. And then, I mean, compounding this is the fact that next week you're going to Atlanta and you're going to have the same type of pack racing again. <sighs> so I'm sure. And now you're a day later. So these guys that ball their stuff up tomorrow, are going to have one less day. Hopefully you have another one sitting in there. But, I mean, how many of these cars, how many super speedway cars do you have ready for a season when after today you're not on a super speedway again until Talladega in, what, is that May? And then again in, you know, end of August at Daytona. So it really is a difficult task for these teams, what they're given here the early start of the season. NASCAR, we're just trying to save these boys yeah, money. Not really. Yeah. As long as you're going to these, what they used to call plate track, they don't have plates anymore. Uh, but when they go to these tracks, I mean, 
you might as well have a disposable car because you're more than likely going to bring it back on a flatbed. That's how that works. We're glad you're tuned in. LTN returns after these messages. EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Keeping on the down low here is the Dan Patrick Show. Money trumps everything. And then they said, oh, they'll never break, you know, those contracts. They broke those contracts because the amount of money that was there. They tried to do it. All those bowl games. I'm sorry. You know, the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl or the Pool and Weed Eater Bowl. We have some nice consolation prizes for you. We're talking big money here. Dan Patrick. The Dan Patrick Show. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Hey, let's jump into the Xfinity series. I haven't heard much about them. There's uh, several uh, local connections with the uh, with the Xfinity cars, and uh, for one, you guys uh, ran into Bobby Dotter, and uh, he sounded pretty uh, uh, enthusiastic about the season, huh? Yeah, I remember if we talked. I think we talked to him in December there, and I, I ran into him yesterday when we were walking through the garage area, and he had his his Wendy's visor on, and he had a smile on his face, which was nice compared to what I saw last year. Um, Colleague Racing has really come come to the front and helped them out a little bit. And he said they've always been great with him. And they right now they're going to run tomorrow's race with uh, Daniel Suarez, sponsored by Wendy's, in, in a car. It's got a lot of colleague crew members there, but it's also uh, a daughter's car. And I asked if that's something that's going to look forward. He says maybe four races. We'll see how tomorrow goes. And then his other car has got Patrick Emmerling in it, who is a, a modified, Northeast modified hot shoe been really good in that and i mean he qualified 13th yesterday so that that's really good for that car and if you remember bobby's cars last year really struggled you know a lot to, to see the season start out as well as it did i mean emerling out qualified suarez yesterday so hopefully they can keep that car together which is a crap shoot in that race too and up to the front but bobby says things look a lot better at this time this year than they did last year so that's Excellent. good that's very great news now um there's a bunch of wisconsin connections uh, uh there uh, Josh Balicki is going to be in it. Of course, Sam Mayer, Parker Retzloff, um, Jesse Love, who won a feature at Slinger Speedway uh, at the age of whatever he was, Dan, 16, I think. Yeah, I think he was, yeah, he was that young when he did that. Now he's on actually on the pole in the two car uh, for Childress. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, connections. And, uh, you know, got to give Natalie Decker a shout out, too. She qualified that in the, in the race. She wasn't going to make the race if it rained, and everybody thought qualifying was getting rained out. So she got her shot and she put it in the show. So that's another Wisconsin driver uh, in this event. And uh, we talked to Josh Balicki for a while. He's got he, maybe up to 20 races in this car on the Xfinity side. He's also doing some road racing stuff for a Porsche on, on another series. Josh but, lost uh, his sponsor, though, right? Well, yeah, the Ziegler, if you, you notice it's on the 77 car that Hosefer is going to drive. I mean, he was going to go have a deal to go drive the Spire trucks and had like a million other times it's happened before for people. You you bring the sponsor to the table, and once you get to the, the big one, it kind of gets pulled from under you, and, and that's kind of what happened there. Yeah, and jo- Josh and Natalie are actually teammates. They're parked right next to each other when we were talking to Josh, and <clears throat> he said Natalie went out and, and grabbed grabbed the sponsorship from this uh, Amped Fitness, which is right out of here at Daytona Beach, and put it together. They had a a Hendrick motor in that car. Josh's car had an RCR motor in it. And I mean, they're very comparable as far as speeds are concerned. I mean, Josh all qualified Haley Deegan. Everybody was all excited about her debut this year. And that, that car didn't have quite the speed in it. We were thinking it was going to be so um, good, good representation by the Wisconsin folks in this race. Uh, Parker Retzloff looks really solid. That team looks to be in really good hands. He was pretty happy. I, I talked to the, the funk away people yesterday. They gave me a sample of their funk away stuff. Funk away. Uh, the company is right out of northern Illinois, so they're they're 
they're, they have a lot of Wisconsin ties to it. They're they're really happy with it, and they're looking for big things from from Parker this year. So hopefully they can they can come to the front and be a competitor this year. That whole Jordan Anderson team looks like they've upped their game a lot. Just when you go around the area, they're in the front part of the garage instead of the back part of the garage. So I, I expect big things from them this year. Um, of all those Xfinity teams, we just threw names out there. I believe that the the car with the uh, the best chance at not only winning at uh, Daytona tomorrow, but also uh, for a championship would be Sam Mayer. Um, the, the young man has certainly come a long way in uh, not a whole lot of time. And uh, he's been fun to watch. And uh, he's, you know, that junior equipment seems to be pretty darn good. And here he is uh, with a shot to win at Daytona. Yeah, and they have a different looking looking car this year, too. It's red. Uh, it says like Carolina Carports on it, I believe, is the main sponsorship. I didn't. I walked right by it the first time and didn't even notice it when we were walking through there. But, I mean, he's he's up there with the seniority level at Junior Motorsports now. If you think about it, other than Justin Allgaier, he's like second there. You know, you had Brandon Jones came along last year. Sam had already been there, so um, he's moving up the hierarchy at Junior Motorsports. They have a new guy there this year uh, with Sammy Smith. He's now going to be running, you know, one of the Junior Motorsports cars. So, the the whole Xfinity garage, as you see a lot through the years changed the way it was i mean jesse love in that two car you think sheldon creed when you see it because he was in there for a couple of years but sure. sheldon has moved over to joe gibbs racing now and there's still not a lot of love between those two when you hear people talk about it so that'll be interesting to see when sheldon is racing around an rcr car as the year goes on here to see if there's still a lot of that bad juju going on from last year you know there has to be a path and i wonder just what the path looks like for sam mayer um you know it, there has to be um, a job opening on the top level of NASCAR for him to move up, and he has to be uh, financed enough to be able to do that, and I'm not sure that would be a problem. However, uh, the opportunity to move into a top-level team, he's ready, it seems like to me. Another year should pretty much solidify his uh, his case, uh, but, you know, without a path. You know, he's a Chevy guy right now. That doesn't mean, you know, Josh Berry was a, a Chevy guy, and here he is making his debut in a Ford. So um, y- you never know. I'm just that. My only concern about Sam is that there'll be somewhere for him to land when it becomes time for him to move up. Otherwise, you know, okay, we'll spend another year in uh, the Xfinity series and, and cross our fingers and hope that in another year there's an opportunity. What's out there for Sam? You know, that's a concern, I think. Yeah, and you don't want to go too quickly. I mean, we saw that with Cole Custer. You know, he I think he moved up too quickly, and, and now he had to take a step back and now got his championship, and he's going to run another full series in there. I don't think there's anything wrong with hanging out in the Xfinity Series for a while, winning some races, getting your name out there. I mean, it took until, what, that was the end of July when Sam won his first race, you know? So we'll see how this year goes, if that team is just as strong, if he can win a bunch of races again over there and then and then maybe something will open in the future i mean you don't know you don't know how long these guys are going to do it i mean kyle larson threw out there that he was only going to race till he's 40 you know i mean that's that's 10 years yet but is he really going to want to go that long i I mean just don't know i don't get the big rush to move people along anyway why not try to win a championship two or three in a division to really establish your fan base and then move up to the next level yeah, I agree. I think that's I think we like I said, we learned all that with with Cole Custer, that that was too quick of a move uh, and he's doing better now back where he is. It's uh, he's still young, too. Uh, you know, Sam is uh, what, 21, maybe, I guess. 22. I think it's that's a whole problem throughout the entire NASCAR. There's so many people getting rushed through because of the financial ability and their talent is not fully honed. You talk about the problem with the truck race, all the crashing. It's the same thing there. Perhaps Harrison Burton is this, is a good example of that. Uh, exactly. Was he ready to move up? I didn't think he no, was when he moved. Right, right. And we're going to see John Hunter now. He's going to be up in the Cup Series again. He's still running in this Xfinity race tomorrow, but he's kind of bounced back and forth and back and forth. And is he fully ready now to run a full Cup season? We'll see. Oh, I think so. I think so. Uh, he he certainly, uh, to me, looked ready before he took the step back. Because, well, he has raced up there, you know, um, again uh, and, and and had to take a step back. But, you know, like PJ said, it was a good move for him because, uh, you know, sometimes it's okay to take a step back. In the same – now, in the, keeping that mentality, uh, what about Cole Custer? There's no path for him again. Um, 
although, you know, remember that all four drivers didn't necessarily bring big money with them to to uh, to have a ride at that uh, Stuart the Haas team. So, you know, it's I wouldn't say it's confusing. I would say that, you know, it's a numbers issue. There's another one to see place for you. Chandler Smith now full time in the Xfinity Series this year in the Gibbs 81 car. Look for him to do well. Yeah. Just another example. We'll be back. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's sales and service, 920-994-4358. EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMF. BMFLandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. BMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. This is two pros and a cup of joe. We're getting back into it. We got some drama in the NFL. So the uh, 49ers practice surface, they're uh, practicing over at UNLV. They put sod on top yes. of a filter. The NFL hardness score, which I didn't know that was a thing. Huh. It's, uh, it's <laughs> two pros. LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings, 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And now the LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. Full week of dirt racing down here in Florida. Bookended by rain. We had rain on Monday and we had rain on Saturday. But on Monday... They were able to get the majority of those shows in, leaving just features. So they made all these features up on Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll start Monday or uh, Tuesday at Barberville, Florida, Volusia Speedway Park, for the 53rd annual Dirt Car National, seven thousand dollars a win. Devin Moran was your winner there. Logan Seavey picked up the win in the USAC Amsoil Sprint Cars. They also made up Monday night's feature, and he won that as well. Out in Tampa, Florida, East Bay Raceway Park, the High Limit Sprint Car Series opened up their season. With Tyler Courtney picking up the main event on Tuesday, they had the makeup feature from Monday night, and Kyle Larson grabbed the win in that. Wednesday night, Volusia Speedway Park, Dan and I were there for the Dirt Car Nationals. They had triple 5,000 to win UMP late model features. Bobby Pierce, Brandon Shepard, and Mikey Marler winning those races. They also had a $7,000 to win UMP late model feature from Monday night. Bobby Pierce doubled down and won that one as well. That one had... <laughs> That one had a lot of fireworks. Oh, right? yeah. Ricky Thornton didn't have any friends Wednesday night. Let's put it that way. No, Ricky Thornton, he got he, he was leading both races. He got he got hammered in the five thousand dollar to win feature by Devin Moran, which was kind of a racing deal, but cut his tire. And then there was all kinds of fireworks on Wednesday night with him and him and Marler and a lap car. And yeah, poor Rick, poor Ricky had a rough week, but you know, <laughs> he won a lot of races last year, so you can't feel yeah. too sorry for him. <laughs> Uh, and the Big Block Modified showed up on Wednesday night as well with Matt Shepard picking up the win in that one. East Bay also opened up their King of the 360s. That was supposed to be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday event because of the impending weather. They pushed everything up a day, and they had Aaron Reitzel winning the 2000 to win uh, 360 feature on Wednesday at East Bay. Thursday night in Ocala, the USAC Amsoil National Sprint Car Series continued their speed weeks with Justin Grant picking up another win there. East Bay, another 2,000 win preliminary feature for the King of the 360s with Austin Macaro winning. And then at Volusia, for the Dirt Car Nationals, the World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Model Series opened up or continued their series. They ran back in January a pair of features, 12,000 to win. Nick Hoffman grabbing the win on that. I mean, that was an outstanding race. I mean, with two laps to go, Nick Hoffman was probably 10 car lengths behind, and he just, he just you know, 
I don't know what you want, got up on the wheel and drove by Chris Madden. Chris Madden, after the race, he was more stunned than anything. He's just like, I, I can't believe what you were able to do. But it was a hell of a race, right, Dan? Yeah, and the last lap pass was kind of cool. I mean, Hoffman stuffed it in the, into one so hard and on the inside. I didn't think he was going to be able to hook the corner like he did, and then he washed up, and he didn't, and then he made it to three and four and got the win. Very popular win. Uh, a lot of people like Nick Hoffman, and uh, I think it's good to see him get a win. Nick. Yeah, he kind of made his name down here running UMP Modifieds for all the years. I mean, he beat – this is how long he's been doing it. I mean, he beat Austin Dillon in a UMP Modified about 10 years ago down here. So Great and equally fun to watch. Yes, an equally impressive big block uh, dirt car feature. Matt Williamson picked up the win on that. That one came down to the end as well. Volusia Racing has just been outstanding there. They, this is now going to be the main track in Florida with East Bay gone. I mean, I think Volusia already had moved to the head of that. But, I mean, they just continue to impress. Uh, Friday night, Ocala, C.J. Leary picked up the USAC National Sprint Car win. The big king of the 360s, $10,000 to win feature went to Ryan Timms at East Bay. And the finale for the Dirt Car Nationals at Volusia went to Devin Moran. They they took some of the money that they were going to pay Saturday night, added it to the purse on Friday night, made it a 16000 to win feature. And Devin Moran picked up the win. That Bobby Pierce became the overall champion of the full week. He got the real big gator at the end of the week. And the Super Dirt Car Series Big Block Modifieds, Matt Shepard picked up the win on Friday night with Matt Williamson being the overall champion. Saturday, as you know, it rained everywhere, all over the place. So there was no racing yesterday. Everybody just sat in the bars. And boy, were they full. I'll say that. <laughs> I bet! <laughs> I love it. Well, in the asphalt world, the uh, World Series of Asphalt was going on at New Smyrna Speedway. And uh, Sunday night in the Super Late Models, Gus Dean was your winner. Uh, Austin Nason made the track down there, finished fourth in that race. Derek Krause, eighth. William Swalich, ninth. Ty Fredrickson, 12th. Mitch Haver, 18th. And uh, Bubba Pollard, 27th. Gabe Summers, 29th. And James Lynch was 32nd in that race. Pro Lights also ran on Sunday night. Dawson Sutton was your winner. Billy Braun was eighth. RJ Braun, 25th. Monday night at New Smyrna, the Pro Lights ran. Dawson Sutton was your winner. Billy Braun finished 20th. And then Tuesday was the big ASA Stars National Tour race there. Bubba Pollard was the winner. And while Ty Majeski did mm. have some axle drive plate issues, um, Bubba was he still was coming. Hard to beat, though. Well, Bubba was still coming. And even if uh, you heard Ty's interview afterwards, he said that Bubba was really cutting through one and two like nobody else. And uh, mm. he thinks that he probably would have been passed by Bubba regardless of the act. The run that Ty had in that first 75 laps is probably the most impressive part. I mean, Dan and I were there. Seeing him come from 17th to the lead in 75 laps on a track where you, quote, unquote, couldn't pass on was yeah. unbelievably impressive. And all the people around us, too, were like, wow, that the racing was phenomenal on Tuesday there, I will say. Well, and side note, as someone who's sleeping with the crew chief, um, <laughs> he was – very, very nervous because they didn't have any practice. They just showed up to race on Tuesday. So, and it was a new tire for that series as well. So anyway, um, Bubba Pollard did pick up the win quite handily. Austin Nace, another great run, seventh for him. William Swalich was 11th, Derek Kraus 12th. Majeski ended up falling back to 16th. And Ty Fredrickson, uh, who qualified really well for that race, uh, finished 21st. On Wednesday night, uh, great bounce back uh, for uh, Ty Fredrickson on this one. But Gio Ruggiero, the knuckle dragger, ended up winning it. Gabe Summers was third. Ty, or Derek Krause, fourth. Fredrickson was 10th. Mitch Haver, 12th. Pro late models on Wednesday night. Hunter Wright was your winner. Billy Braun up to 10th that evening. Thursday night was a really great night of pro late model racing. Brent Cruz, who has been really dominant the whole time, he ended up picking up that win. Uh, Ty Fredrickson was fourth. Gabe Summers, fifth. Derek Krause, seventh. Mitch Haver, ninth. Your champion for the Super Lates was Brent Cruz. Uh, so congrats to him. And an honorable showing, though, for our Midwest boys as well. Uh, Derek Krause ended up fourth overall. Ty Fredrickson, seventh overall. Hmm. Gabe Summers, 11th. Austin Nason, 12th. Mitch Haver, 12th. And William Swalich, 14th. Pro Lates ran on Thursday night as well. George Phillips was your winner. R.J. Braun, best finish of the week, finishing second. Chad Butts was 26th. Friday night, the Prolates. George Phillips was your winner. R.J. Braun was ninth. The champion for the Prolates was Hunter Wright. Billy Braun finished 10th overall. R.J. Braun, 20th overall. And uh, ARCA, we didn't really touch on that too much, but uh, Gustine did win that at Daytona, which that was moved to Friday night after the truck race. And actually finished on Saturday morning. Right. So, yeah. 
I mean, one one thing to add there is the amount of cars that were at New Smyrna compared to what we've seen over the years. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, part of the parking lot when we got there on Tuesday was a pit area. I mean, actually, that's we saw Toby wheeling his four wheeler out of the truck. That, that's where we used to park. You know, it's 52 late super late models there on Tuesday. We'll uh, talk about our picks <laughs> like we do anything right about that. And some of the odds when we come back. Hang in there. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. The Milwaukee Admirals have extended their winning streak to a franchise record 16 games. They'll look for 17 on Monday when they take on the Manitoba Moose. Caliber Deeks goes for it. He scores his second of the game. Three game coverage from Winnipeg at 1.30. Face off at 2 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Welcome back. We're getting ready. Well, getting ready because <clears throat> the Daytona 500 is tomorrow. Also, the Xfinity race will be uh, televised starting at uh, 10 o'clock central time. And both races will be carried on Channel 6 tomorrow, for those of you who are uh, going to be available for that. <clears throat> I, uh, I have a local casino over here. I don't do the app thing. I don't, I'm afraid of it. I just go over there once in a while and, and take a look at the odds and put throw a couple of bucks on it. And um, I, I, it seems to me that they don't have any real... Super. I mean, L- Joey Logano is the favorite at ten to one. Now think about that. Ten to one. A lot of times you'll see four to one or three to one on a guy. Um, this is such a crapshoot that you've got some really good drivers with odds that aren't that good. For instance, look at this group of twenty-five to one: Austin Sindrick, who's won this; Michael McDowell, who's won this; Martin Truex, Eric Jones, and. Thursday's qualifier winner, Tyler Reddick, all at 25 to 1. Are you kidding me? Interesting. They can't all win, but uh, I like some of the odds that we that we throw around for this thing. So, um, um, But uh, uh, Hamlin is at 12, Kyle Busch 14, Bell 16, Larson. Larson 16. Doesn't he seem like a... Uh, like a the a kind of a go-to guy on some of these uh, races that that it just seems like 16 to one on Kyle Larson is is very very inviting. Uh, either way, um, I'm I'm not good at this. You, as you can tell by my pick, Kyle Busch is in a backup car, and I'm picking him to win the 500 tomorrow. So from there, and that was at uh, 14 to one, by the way. I'll go to uh, Dan Margetta next. Well, I mean, it's a tough race to pick and win because, like you said, everybody's got a shot, and it all depends on being in the right place at the right time. Oh, yeah. I think there are cars that are, are good pushers, like uh, the Penske Fords. You know, they're good in the single speed, and you can see they can push a car, and you got cars that aren't that handle a lot better, which, like, the Toyotas do. You know, they, they showed up in the race. Um, they didn't have the single car speed. I'm going to go with a Toyota. I'm going to go with Tyler Reddick. Uh, I think the 2311 cars are, are between him and, and Bubba Wallace right now are the, are the strongest right now, and I— and- if Bubba's Reddick is so smart enough, here. again, if you're smart enough, they stay out of the mess until the very end. You got a shot, and I, I'm going to go with Reddick this year. All right, and Brian, 
Yeah, it's such a crapshoot. I don't know. But this race has a has a knack for having some new winners, guys that haven't won before that win this race. You know, Michael McDowell comes to mind. Uh, yeah. Cindric. Cindric. Mine. Uh, you know, guys like that. So I'm going to I'm going to go with Ty Gibbs. Um, if he can keep his nose clean, those Toyotas are good. He looks good overall. He's got a little bit of different swagger to him this year. Uh, 22 to one. That'd be a hell of a win for him. And he's starting right mid pack. So if he can keep his nose clean, I'm, I'm going to go with Ty Gibbs and PJ. My heart is telling me Brad Keselowski, but my mind says it's Daytona, and anything can happen. I'm going with Bubba Wallace. Um, that's like Dan said. He's, uh, I mean, for one, we know that he's very, very good on these uh, super speedways. So that's not. I bet you we can all guess who Toby's picking, right? Yeah, same guy. And I asked him that this morning. I said, "Are you going to come in to make a pick?" And he said, "I don't know. I'm not feeling that great. He's got a lung thing going on." So he said, I said, well, who are you picking? He said, who do you think I'm picking? I'm like, okay. Busher's at 16, by the way. That's who he's taking. Solid pick, though, too, I would say. That's a solid well, he's going to pick Chris Busher for every race because he loves <laughs> Mike Herman, who is his spotter, and he loves Fords. So every race, it's going to be Chris Busher for Toby. Uh, 16 to 1 <clears throat> is what uh, Vegas is saying on that one. So just so you know. Um very interesting, and I'll, I'll put him down for that, too, because why not? And Busher became a father Thursday. They made it sound like he made it back on time to see his wife have, have the baby, but it, it, he just missed it, I believe. But he flew back after the, the uh, qualifier and uh, visited his wife and his new son in the hospital. So congratulations to them. Um, <clears throat> there are, there are some David, guys. David Reagan, I think, practiced the car while he was gone. Oh, okay. And Reagan, remember has been very good on this sort of track, although Reagan's at 80 to one. Uh, some other ones that you might find interesting. Jimmy Johnson is at 80 to one for this one. What so, is Carson Hosevar at? Cause that car is starting up front and that guy's goofy enough. He could be up there at the end of this thing. 50 to one. Wow. For, wouldn't that be Carson something? Hosevar. To get the Ziegler automotive group in victory lane. Oh, that would be kind of a bitter. I mean, look at Jimmy Johnson. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's wiser. So on those guys that are wiser, when it comes down to it, and you're going to have to either bury it in there or back out and be smart, Jimmy will be smart, I think. I'm not sure he's going to take that kind of a crazy chance that sometimes you need to take to win this race because it's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice Almondinger go right to the front the other night? He's at 66 to 1 to win the thing. You know, imagine. And I'm looking at some of the other, you know, former winners like Austin Dillon, 33. Um, yeah. There are people that, you know, here's Stenhouse. 30 to 1. Uh, we don't know. Did he have to go to a backup car? I don't think uh, he I did. I know the 8 didn't, and, and obviously the 12 did because the 12 hit that big shot. By the way, Ryan Blaney hits the wall at 55 Gs, and that was down from his hit last year, which was 70 Gs when he hit it. Um, it's amazing of all the safety items that they have put into these cars. And he that, was uh, mad. Wow, was he mad? He's tired yeah. of being victim of somebody's bad, bad push, and that's well, happened. He's been right used a couple to it. Times. <laughs> you think it's going to get better are, in the 500? The last backup cars are Kyle Busch, Noah Gregson in the 10, Blaney in the 12, Byron in the 24, Hemrick in the 31, and Garala in the 36 because of an engine change. So those are your backup cars. Uh, well, even though the eight car has to, you know, you can't go forever without winning this thing, right? He had so, this race one a year ago. If that, you know, we wouldn't have made it back to the flag. The three was going to push him to the win, and then we had a wreck, and then messed everything up. He moves to the front on sheer anger sometimes. <laughs> yes, he does, and he's fun to watch, isn't he? We're glad you tuned in for this Daytona 500 special as we get ready for the greatest race in the world, as far as I'm concerned. We we talk bad about it, but it's wonderful. It's a great day for racing people. And tomorrow, Channel 6, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the race itself, the 500, will be at 3 in the afternoon. So uh, <clears throat> keep this in mind. Real race cars have doors, even if they do climb in through the windows. LTN is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our engineer is Matt Losey, who's had to deal with all kinds of issues back at the uh, back at the homestead. So thanks for doing all that, and thanks to our wonderful listeners for tuning in. Let's hope the Lord gives us a good, safe race. See ya. 
This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network. Thank you.